Hi everyone, welcome back. I was just a little delayed today. I was supposed to go live at 12, but I was replying to a client and really wanted to voice note her back, to be honest, about something she was struggling with. I will often send clients a voice note if they need it or just some encouragement. So today we are talking about a really vulnerable, open, taboo topic I think to some and that topic is loneliness and feeling lonely both potentially you know in your upbringing but also into adulthood and loneliness with struggling with friendships. I think so many women struggle with friendships and making new friends as adults you know it's something a lot of people deal with and I've had my own struggles with it in the past and I've had a lot of growth in this area. I've worked really hard to cultivate some beautiful soul sister friendships in my life and I also run a community called the Put Yourself First Sisterhood which is the doors are open currently for new members so make sure you've checked it out. The link is in my bio on Instagram or in the show notes of the podcast. And this community, I put up a post the other day, like this community is like my inner child's like dream come true. <laughs> because I didn't always feel like I had like-minded women in my life. I didn't always feel that I had people around me who who got me, who understood me. And I think so many of us are silently dealing with that. So let me share a bit of a background on my friendships, my in my childhood, I really why I really struggled to make friends maybe even keep friends or like sustain friendships. For me, there were two parts of this. First of all, when I first went to school and when I was like very young, I remember being so confident and so like, um, I could talk to anyone, I could speak to anyone, I could make friends with anyone, I was very like, I loved performing, I loved being around people, I loved being the centre of attention and I think so many kids are like that, right? We like unfiltered, um, don't give a fuck, are just like doing their thing and somewhere along the way in primary school, I for whatever reason started becoming more introverted and what I think people perceive as shy because if you're an introvert you'll know that it's not always that you are scared to speak or you are shy like you are intimidated for me so often it's like I actually don't want to speak like in school, in class, I didn't want to put my hand up. And for so many years, it was every parent's evening. Cat is shy. Cat never puts her hand up. Cat is always the quieter one in the class. And something that I find so frustrating about that whole system of giving kids feedback in that way of like basically comparing kids from such a young age is if you tell a kid often enough something about themselves you are shy or you are not very smart or whatever the label is that you can put on a kid they will believe you because you're the adult, you're the authority. And so that's really important to share with this story on community and friendship and sisterhood because I'd been having that 
almost like drilled into me <laughs> and that conditioning was happening and the irony is like if you tell a kid you should do this more you should do this more so you should speak up more you should put your hand up you should speak up more in class they actually want to do it less because the word should is basic is basically pressure and shame and comes from like ego language rather than encouraging higher energy you know it you might want to invite the the kid to share more you might want to encourage them you might want to let you know you might want to dig a little deeper around why are they not putting the hand up is there anything they're concerned about is there any reason why and then you might get a different outcome but that's a whole other rant for an other for another podcast but I probably by midway through like primary school we call it in the UK um I was fully like full on the shy quiet kid <laughs> quite a shy quiet kid unless I was with my friends because that's the other thing about me like I never lost that sassiness I never lost that feeling of like loving singing and dancing and performing and wanting to be the center of attention and having fun I never lost that that was always there it was just not brought out of me in like these environments especially school I didn't thrive in school in that way but if you knew me like if you really knew me I was the life and soul of the party so that was going on and at the same time I from a young age had two really beautiful like close friends um my two like besties that I grew up with Georgie and Jess we were really close friends me and Georgie basically from birth because our mums are best friends which is so cute and just the cutest little story ever so our mums are best friends so I knew her from basically birth and then Jess kind of we became like this trio around like the end of primary school so the beauty of that is I always had those two to like fall back on and rely on and that was a blessing and a curse and we've spoke about this so many times it's a blessing because it's so gorgeous to have from such a young age people you're really close with people you love to hang out with people who do get you, who do accept you, who you can fully be yourself around and at the same time it also meant that all three of us like really struggled with other friendships, like we really struggled to maintain or cultivate friendships outside of our little trio and with them living far away you know and only being able to see them on the weekend not even every single weekend only some weekends I really struggled at school like I really struggled there were periods I can remember where I had like a close friend who I would hang out with most of the time and I would see on the weekends and I would say that friend like changed over the whatever like 10 year period but I hated school basically. <laughs> I hated school for that reason because I just felt stifled. I felt like I couldn't be myself. I felt like I was weird and a bit of an alien and like no one got me. And I know I'm not speaking alone here. I know the irony is when you feel like that, so many other people feel like that and yet we still feel alone in that experience even though we can't be alone because so many people struggle with it <laughs> so I really battled and struggled with cultivating new friends I definitely had a ton of sisterhood wounding which is essentially like 
struggling with female friendships not from the perspective of almost like that classic stereotypical oh I'm not friends with girls which I have such a pet peeve with and that's another another conversation for another day I always I always have been like a girl's girl through and through I've always gravitated towards female energy and being in small circles with women I mean like that's how I grew up like I had two best friends so I've always gravitated to that dynamic where it's a smaller group but you can have like a really beautiful deep and meaningful discussion and like come away feeling really full and I struggled to like have that in school I struggled to get that because of course going through primary school and then obviously high school like everyone's going through (laughs) their own stuff so by the time I got to college I basically didn't have any friends (laughs) and I'm laughing even though it's not funny like it's really not funny I'm laughing because I know people say that as a joke but it wasn't a joke, like I genuinely didn't have any friends apart from Georgie and Jess, who again, they came, we came to the same college for like a year, but because they're a year older than me, they obviously left. So they left to, you know, go to uni, do whatever they were doing next. And so I was in college for a year by myself. And because I'd already had all this shit go down with, I struggled to make new friends. I struggled to be myself around people who I didn't really know. So I never like got over the line with actually hanging out with new people. And what you'll also remember, I'm sure, from high school and college is like people make their little groups. And that is honestly one of my pet peeves. And I never ever ever will stand for that in my community where there is an established group of people who already are friends or already know each other and only those people will only talk it's like those people will only talk to those people and I'm sure you've been there as an adult even where you've walked into a room a work event a networking event a social hobby a new class at the gym even or whatever it is and people are in their little groups and then even though you're maybe making an effort to connect with them and you know maybe like smiling or saying hi or waving or whatever you get that sense you get that energy that the group is established and you're not invited in let me tell you like that for me makes me feel ill like it makes me it makes me it gives me the ick it gives me the ick because I cannot stand to see a woman on her own walk into a room and not be welcomed by another group of women like that that is insane to me that that happens in adult circles even and so of course when we're all kids like when we're all growing up that's happening you know teenagers are teenagers and high school and college really is like the wilderness (laughs) you just you're out there on your own in the wilderness and you've got to figure out how to survive so coming out of all of that I like my confidence with friendships took a huge knock and there was this period from I would say like that second year of college so I would have been like eight, turning 18 through to like 24 maybe 25 where I felt so so intensely lonely that it was almost like this 
there was this em there was this empty void in my life there was this empty space where sisterhood was supposed to be and it just wasn't there and obviously during this time I had I still had my two friends you know I still had the odd acquaintance but what I've come to learn about sisterhood and friendship is you can't rely on one person to fulfill all of your friendship nourishment needs you know it's it's too much to place on one or even two people and again especially when friends you're going off doing different things i for example didn't go to uni i didn't get a normal nine to five job i like juggled part-time stuff whilst i was building my first business and so i was doing a lot of things that were othering me and basically placing me like on a different path to other people in my life and so being already coming from that background of being like the awkward one already having not um been nurtured or not been able to develop the skills of cultivating new friendships and part of me also not wanting to because I was really picky as well about new friends and I still am like I still am I'm really I need to be around women who are like-minded and who I can have a great conversation with and so all of that <laughs> paired with you know being an entrepreneur which is a lonely fucking journey especially in the beginning being like still living at home with my parents when everyone else was off to uni all these things like added up to me feeling for like the first part of my adult life really fucking lonely really lonely and I remember even when me and Adam bought this home so four years ago now I remember even then he would be out on a weekend you know if, if he had plans with friends and we didn't have plans together and I was still on my personal growth and like healing journey back then I just started my coaching business and I just had like that that feeling of that void was so deep and the thing people don't talk about with friendship and sisterhood and loneliness the thing people don't talk about and one of my biggest pet peeves in the industry is that it's all focused on like you as an individual so you need to heal this within yourself you need to love yourself first before anyone else can love you you need to do xyz and then you will manifest friends then you will you know be able to attract good friendships into your life or relationship or whatever it is that is a very like common common like theme right that we hear again and again and i think there's some truth to it i really do but i think it's both you need to be working on yourself of course you do because of course i had shit to deal with in myself when it came to being able to be myself being able to trust people um not being so friggin avoidant like looking at my avoidant attachment style <laughs> all of this stuff was happening yes and community is a human need we literally need other people to survive we cannot survive without the group and <coughs> i think so many people discount that in today's world and they think that if they've just read all of the books if they've listened to all of the podcasts if they've done all the work on themselves 
then that's enough and then that will somehow fix their loneliness but I think more and more people are feeling isolated people are feeling alone people are feeling like nobody gets them or nobody like they can't be themselves around the people that they know and it's an epidemic and it come for me it really comes down to the fact that as women we thrive in sisterhood we thrive in community women th like when you think of our primal instinct we thrive in that village dynamic where there are other women there to help us i'm gonna sneeze Phew. hay fever sorry we thrive in that village dynamic where another woman can help us cook a meal and you know it would go in like way back here so i'm being stereotypical but women would literally breastfeed each other's babies like there is there is so much of that community and that village dynamic that we have just lost in modern society and i think many women are suffering for it you know many women feel that they don't have those deep sisterhood connections in their life where some you know another woman is they have an intimate relationship with another woman and when i say that i don't mean a romantic relationship i mean intimacy in friendship you know intimacy in communication intimacy in active listening feeling fully heard feeling seen feeling supported feeling like another woman knows what is going on in your life and maybe checks in with you and you check in with her and you have that open discussion to share without needing to you know fix each other without needing to solve a problem without needing to do anything other than just listen and share and we've really lost that and i think so many women are craving more of that in their life and it was only recently when i realized that so much of that energy is cultivated inside of the sisterhood on our calls or at our event where women who for all you know on the surface level these women don't know each other they aren't friends they aren't connected in real life but they are connected in this circle because they are coming together as like-minded individuals for a common purpose whether it's on our manifesto goals calls and they're sharing their goals with each other or whether it's on a sister circle and they're sharing something that's on their heart that they're going through and they're coming together and sharing in this way with like-minded women they're sharing they're hearing they're being celebrated they're being understood and in that call like you wouldn't even know that these women have never met in real life <laughs> have never met have never gone for lunch together but here we are on this zoom call like bearing our souls to each other <laughs> because of what we're here to do together you know women sharing their deepest darkest like limiting beliefs that they're working through women sharing their huge like their biggest dreamiest desires and goals that they have and i realized the other day that the sisterhood i've created is so much my own inner child's or like my younger selves wildest dream wildest dream because if 
24-year-old cat had been able to head on to a workshop with other women who were also well into personal development, who were also well into manifestation or spirituality or whatever the theme is, and simply be doing all of the personal development work I was doing by myself, but in community, I feel like that's what my younger self really needed. She really needed that. And she's literally like, I feel like she's buzzing, seeing seeing what we've created at this point. And this, this month marks three years of the sisterhood. I started the Put Yourself First Sisterhood end of May, beginning of June last year. And a memory pops up on my phone the other day on the 1st of June 2020 it was like first official workshop for the sisterhood dawn and I just had a moment where I felt really emotional (laughs) for one and also so fucking proud so proud because whether you resonate with your younger self feeling like she struggled to make friends or whether you're in your 30s, in your 40s, and you still might struggle with making friends, it's okay. Like, you are not alone. And I think so many women are craving more connection. And it's almost like with all the modern technology we have for all of the cool shit that we can do on social media and with AI or whatever we're like more advanced than ever right supposedly and we've got access to more information than ever and at the same time so many people feel lonelier than ever and I think it's this for many women coming from that deep like knowing that we thrive in sisterhood it's that remembrance that we come we come from ancestors that thrived in that village community dynamic where someone knew that you were having a hard time or that your grandmother was not very well or that you were, you know, your family were expanding or you were going traveling or whatever it might have been other women knew about that and cheered you on and shared that with you and you shared it with them too and I think we are trying to get back to that feeling and it's not perfect you know would I love to host like everything I do in person of course I would Like, there's nothing better than meeting Sisterhood members in real life. There's nothing better. And I loved our event in May. And we've got to use, we may as well use this technology that we have to get back to that feeling of deep connection, of Sisterhood, of friendship. And I have learned along the way, because from my early 20s I remember making a really conscious effort that I was I was ready to create more friendship in my life and I was ready to reach out more to people I went on this like mission over those years to just really actively consciously be in community you know, go to events. Um, If I was chatting with someone, arrange to meet up with them or, you know, support each other on Instagram, whatever it might have been. And I got to a point like years later, let's say over like a five year period where I turned around 
and all of a sudden I realised that yeah I still had my best girls Georgie and Jess and I always will always will and I'd managed to create and cultivate these adult friendships that I if you told me I had you know if you told me how many amazing friends I have now when I was say 21 I would not have believed you I would simply not have believed you I wouldn't have been able to see that I could be this close and be you know have have the women in my life that I have now where not only do I have <laughs> I mean I feel like my younger self would be happy that I have plans because like I said when Adam went out with his friends I would be like I don't have any plans and I'd be really sad <laughs> and I'd be like my younger self would be like oh my god we're going for lunch with someone we're going <laughs> we're going round to someone's house we're going meeting up for a walk with someone and she'd be like oh my god all these things are happening this is so cool she'd be buzzing and I think she'd also be quite shocked and almost in disbelief that you can be you can have friendships that are this close as an adult you know women who I've only known for say a few years like five years but I feel like I've known them my whole life and that's the beauty of that balance coming back to what I said before of doing the personal development work yes knowing yourself working on yourself and also recognizing that you need connection and you need community and you need both in order to thrive you need both and the beauty of circles like the put yourself first sisterhood is you get to do both together you get to do both and doing both together actually creates stronger results because if my younger self had been more acknowledged celebrated encouraged if she just had those moments where I think back to say a goal that I had of you know growing my first business as a makeup artist and how nervous I was and how much self-doubt I had if I had had the sisterhood for myself to just go on that zoom call and be like yeah my goal for this month is to ha book another wedding client or whatever it would have been and had other people saying yes girl you've got this you're amazing you know you can do this and actually to have had a framework and all these resources too to support me with my goal and then been able to look at all these workshops and other things like oh my god I like my younger self would have been buzzing buzzing to have that and like I said that's my younger self you know that's not that's not to say that where you're at right now it's like I think women struggle with this at all ages is what I'm saying you know this feeling of loneliness and struggling to maintain friendships I think transitions in life bring this feeling of maybe you've moved to a new area where you don't really know anyone maybe you've recently had a baby or got divorced or got into a new relationship you know you've had something something big change in your life that has basically transitioned you into a different chapter into a different phase and I think so many women struggle with they've done that transition and the people in their life maybe haven't and they're now struggling to create new connections that have, with people who are like-minded and can understand where they're at 
and I think it's so important especially with personal development especially with spirituality to surround yourself with positive like-minded people who get it who support you who acknowledge you and want to see you win want to see you win I had a client yesterday and obviously with a client you know it's it's a one-to-one relationship but this totally applies to the sisterhood as well which is why I wanted to share it she basically just said you know it's so nice to have someone who gets it who like not only I can share my spiritual thoughts, beliefs, ponderings with, but also like is that mirror and mirrors that back to me as well. And you know, understands me and gets me and and shares what I'm talking about. And I think that piece is so important because how many women in my Instagram community or in my podcast community how many of you listening feel like you've got all this knowledge inside you, you're working on yourself, you're, you know, looking into all this manifestation stuff and you're delving into your spirituality and all of this and you also don't feel like you can talk about that with other people in your life. Maybe they don't agree with it or they don't understand it or they don't believe in it and all of those things are okay you know it's okay there are certainly people in my life who I love to bits who aren't spiritual and don't get it and that's okay and I can be even more okay and accepting with that and feel really content because I am filling my cup full to the brim with the amazing clients I talk to, you know, the sisterhood members I connect with on the calls, the friends I go for lunch with, and it's not, it's not like uncommon or it's not weird to be like, yeah, so some, um, some trauma that I was digging into recently and I've uncovered and healed was this and I processed that and really you know I released that or yeah so this thing that I manifested the other day well I got this message from the universe during my meditation (laughs) that kind of stuff that kind of talk like is common is normal (laughs) in my friendships it's normal it's welcome it's it's encouraged and I think we all if we're going down this path of being our best selves and living our best life and manifesting our best life we all deserve to feel that from at least some people in our life so I wanted to share this to open up this conversation to highlight this issue this like epidemic like I said at the beginning of loneliness and of people struggling to make maintain um or even in some cases like revive friendships and I hope this is a bit encouraging maybe inspiring even just acknowledging like feeling seen if if that's where you're at right now and if you are looking for like my client said the the other day you know if you are looking to be in community with people who not only see you and hear you in that way but also mirror back to you nice little mic their own thoughts their own beliefs their own ponderings that real sisterhood connection if you are craving more of that in your life I would love you to join us in this sisterhood because 
when I tell you like this community is my inner child's wildest dream <laughs> to be in circle with amazing, inspiring, ambitious women and hear about their goals and their dreams and their fears and their thoughts and their plans for the future. Like it's just epic. It really is epic. And I think so many women need it, crave it and fucking deserve it, deserve to experience it. So the doors are open. If you would like to join us, the link is in my bio and in my show notes, depending on where you're listening. And if you have any questions about the sisterhood, you can just reach out on DM. I really wanted to share this story today from an open heart with vulnerability to not like, you know, not like give you the hard sell or like convince you that this community is the best community or whatever but more just to share my heart and invite you in you know and and let you know that even if you might struggle to make new friends or even if you feel like no one in your life gets it we want to be your friend and we get it and like the door is open the hand is out you are welcome inside and time and time again when I ask current members like what would you say to someone on the fence so many of them say we can't wait to meet you like we can't wait to see you on a call we can't wait to say hi and that really is the truth so we would love to meet you and we'd love to say hi so if you want to say hi if you want to join dive in if you want to chat with me privately first, ask any questions, maybe share where you're at with things and I can see if it's going to be a really good fit for you, then you can also reach out on DM or if you want to email me, you can email support at gathorrocks.com and I'll make sure to get back to you. Okay, kisses, loads of love, have a gorgeous weekend and I hope to see you in the sisterhood if you're joining. See you in there.